Hey everyone, so today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. This is not really off topic, but it is not something I have to deal with too often these days. What I want to get into is the lovely problem of new glasses that you are not able to wear. Not a problem anyone wants to have, but let's take a quick look into it today and see whether that's a problem or not. It's definitely a problem. So uh, first things first, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you can stay up to date on the latest and see the newest videos as we go through different lens technologies, review different sunglasses, and check out all that fun stuff. Definitely helps support the channel, helps keep me here, and it's fun. Yeah, that's fun to me anyways. I hope you guys think it's fun. Now, what we actually want to talk about today. This guy here looks like something out of some foreign movie or some old vintage thingy. Well, it is kind of a vintage thingy. I got this from a friend. It's many years old. These are still glass lenses, which, as you may know, I love. We can talk about that another time, and I'll throw a card up about glass lenses while we're at it. But these are going to help kind of show some of the things we can run into with a pair of glasses that just isn't working. And in fact, that's what I use this for. This is is basically a trial lens set that has all sorts of different negative sphere powers, negative cylinder powers, positive cylinder powers, and positive plus powers. Now again, this is pretty old set, but I dig the old school look and vibe of it. it even smells old when you open the case. Yeah, that's cool to me. Anyways, now what I want to get into is what happens when you put on a new pair of glasses and immediately it just things don't look good it doesn't quite feel right there's a different thing a lot of different things actually that can be at play here if you're a hyper open they've given you new plus or you're a my open they've taken away plus basically if they've increased the amount of plus power typically our brains don't like that so much i'm always very careful here to check that beforehand if i see an increasing plus because naturally we just don't like it. That is one that is almost always going to be an adaptation issue. It takes some time to get used to it. It's nice to know that going in. A lot of people don't think to warn you about this. And, you know, a lot of times they don't even know what you were wearing before, especially if you go to a place like mine. I don't have the full medical record in front of me. Most times I'll take and compare your current glasses as long as I have time to do it. Sometimes things don't work that way. December has been hectic. Anyways, what I want to focus on there is actually that increasing plus. So let's get back to that, shall we? What it amounts to is the natural lens in our eye has some flexibility. It can actually stretch, flatten out, curve, and ciliary muscles in the eye are what cause that kind of swelling, stretching as they relax and as they tighten. So our eyes can add that plus power. That's what helps us to read up close. As we get older, it's not as elastic anymore, and that slowly gets pushed out and out and out. But that's where the problem lies, because as we need more plus power naturally, our eyes learn, hey, I need that extra plus power, so I'm going to add that in, which amounts to, especially as we get older, it's more problematic because we don't have that extra reserve accommodation for reading and other tasks. So what ends up happening is now you can see off far distance good, but up close, not so much. You don't have that reserve power you need it. The thing that happens, you need that plus power at the distance. That's going to be added into the prescription, whether single vision or near, whatever the case may be, if you haven't gotten onto that full presbyopic stage yet. So let's just say we add the plus, and now everything out there is fogged up. So the world has instantly become blurry at the far distances, just like that, right? As we've added that plus, the brain is accommodating the plus, so we've wound up with this guy here is actually uh, 10 diopters plus, I think is what I grabbed, but it really shows off very well what I'm talking about. You get that instant, fuzzy, blurry, bad stuff going on. And that's kind of what happens. You put on glasses that have a little bit more plus power, 
brain says, hey, I need to add in that extra plus power I needed before, but now you don't need it. It's in the glasses. And it takes the brain about three to five days. Some people, it can be a couple weeks. But the main thing is those you want to put on, you want to wear them straight through. Do not touch your old glasses again because that's going to make the adaptation time longer if it can even happen at all if you keep switching back and forth. That's one of the primary scenarios we see that is an adaptation issue every time. The other is an increase in cylinder power. And that one, you're immediately, it's typically whether we shift the axis or increase it dramatically. And you can even see here, I'm not gonna have to turn it around. You can see it skews, it twists things. A change in progressive design or progressive not fit properly can cause this as well because it induces off axis error, which compounds into more weird cylinder stuff. So if you've ever put on a new pair of glasses and seen the table look skewed, Let's see how that looks. So now we've got that cylinder power in front of the lens, and as we twist it, you can see it kind of skews and distorts things. But here's where it gets really fun. If we change the angle of it, there you go. So now you can see that table is skewed, and that's me doing this with the lens. And you can see it happening there a little bit, even at this angle. And what you're seeing when I do that actually is the lens changing in power as it twists. It's about five diopters and that far away, it's a lot more than that. So as we skew it, oh, there we go. That's really nice. You see it right there? So you get some weird distortions as you move this around. And that's what freeform lenses accommodate for. They're gonna adapt instead of the lenses sitting exactly in front of the eye, perfectly level and square, because in glasses they don't, there are calculations done that account for that. So you wind up looking through the prescription you were actually trying to look through, which makes things look better and more crisp and more clear, but it also helps to reduce some of those errors we're talking about there. What I really want to get on here is if we shift that axis, like I was doing as I twist that lens around, the brain's used to seeing it a specific way. So even refractive wise, if you need that increase in cylinder or the shift in direction of the cylinder, you might not be able to tolerate it. It's gonna give you better vision. It's definitely gonna make things more comfortable for you throughout the day if you can adapt to it. It is difficult to adapt to. Now, sometimes with these, we end up finding kind of a middle ground, backing off the cylinder power, or splitting the axis for the first year. Next year, we'll go in and add that extra power to what it actually needs to be. Depending on the individual, <laughs> depending on the individual, will determine the route to go there. Because some people, you know, they can slug through and just tolerate it until the brain says, hey, this is good. And on average, that's gonna be closer to 10 days. That one's a little bit harder to adapt to. The brain doesn't like it as much. Very, very rare, especially if you get into higher powers that you're gonna be able to tolerate that. So it's a matter of balancing what you can handle versus getting the absolute best vision possible. Obviously, we like to shoot for the best vision possible, but if you can't wear it, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, there's fun to play. That's why this is art and optics and science, which is why I love it so much. There's so many different facets there. Now, for increased minus, it gets more fun. So for this one, we're gonna pull out my little friend that I work with a lot, the minus six. You can see the camera has enough magnification and power that even sticking that minus six lens in front of it, no trouble at all powering right through it. Guess what? So you remember earlier, I mentioned our eyes can add in plus power on their own. Well, guess what happens here? You can put more and more and more and more minus in front of the eyes until you can't tolerate it. In fact, I can even take this minus six and I can still see out there and function. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it's a lot of eye strain. I can do it. Fortunately, I'm still young enough. I have that much accommodation left. 
you're not going to see a jump in minus six in prescription in most people. But what I am saying is over time, this can be a problem that's kind of compounding. And when we get older and need that accommodation back, remember what I said earlier about those increasing pluses, they're not as easy tolerable versus that minus. If you add in an extra quarter, an extra half, you can work with it. You can still see good off at a distance. So as that happens, if you're over minus, and now a good optometrist, and most, most all of them know about this and the way it works, so they're not going to do that. There's a simple little red-green test they can compare which is sharper, which is clear, which isn't, and they know if they've given you too much minus. Now, if it's already been done, backing it off, as I mentioned earlier about that increasing plus, takes time. You don't want to make that big jump all at once. Typically, again, some people are anomalies and adapt anyways. It gets weird on that. Now, I know this video is getting pretty long, so I hope you've been able to stick with me this far. But as we get to the minus, this is where it gets tricky. So now you're getting older. You've had that over minus problem for however long. Now, all of a sudden, we need to take away a half diopter of minus for you to be able to see right here, right here, right where I'm looking at you at and over there. So, yeah, we have to take away that half diopter or give it to you in an ad power in between. Those are pre presbyopia and you have small ad powers. And typically what we would do is an anti-fatigue lens combined with reducing that distance power just a little bit. All of this, as I mentioned, it's a balancing act. You really have to find what works better for each individual. It's not going to be the same for everybody. And sometimes what works for him won't work for him or her or whatever because we all like different things. Our brains all do different things. And I'm getting spinny just talking now. But that's why opticians and anyone that works with lenses and glasses will tell you it is incredibly subjective. And that's why we do the subjective refraction rather than something totally objective. Because we can put the perfect prescription in the lenses. But if you can't wear it, it's not doing anybody any good. All of that to say, when you hear the phrase, just put the glasses on and wear them, sometimes that's not true. But a lot of the times it is. It's unbelievable what our brains can actually adapt to. I was actually reading a study earlier that scientists did, and I do not remember the name. I'll have to look that up. I'll throw it in the comments. Don't worry about it. But essentially, they made a pair of glasses that mirrored the entire everything you see so that the world was upside down and they were able to adapt to even that in 10 days and everything looked and appeared normal to them so yeah there's definitely something to be said about adaptation but as i mentioned in this video there's certain points where we know adaptation isn't really the key thing we need to go back and refine something else whether it's the prescription or something that else is going on that needs to be changed and there's a lot of variables. So it's important to know what those are and what you're looking for when you're kind of going through this process. And especially on our end, as troubleshooting goes, there are a myriad of other things to keep up with. So now all that to say, it is important to work with your optical shop to figure out whether it's an adaptation or something that needs to be changed. At any rate, that's all I've got on this topic for today at least. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this video, anything you'd like me to expand on a little bit further, or anything else you would like to know. I will catch you guys next time.